against President Trump. Meanwhile, we'll roll out his new immigration executive order this week, and sources tell CNN that the revised travel ban will include the same seven Muslim-majority countries in the halted order. The president says this order will be more agreeable to the courts. Let's discuss it with Haroon Mogul, our executive director of the Forum for Change and a senior fellow at the Center for Global Policy, and for Hana Kara. She's executive director of Muslim Advocates and the National Association of Muslim Lawyers. Great to have both of you with us this morning. Haroon, I want to start with you. Um, the White House says this is not a Muslim ban. Lipstick on a pig. Uh, it, is, it is the same thing. Uh, and I think it's part of a pattern we're seeing where the, the Trump administration is targeting Muslims while dropping the ball on other kinds of extremism. Uh, and so I think for a lot of Muslims right now, there is a feeling that this is just more of the same. Uh, maybe the language is a little bit more polite. Some of the details have been brushed away where there was resistance within the government. Uh, the bigger problem that I'm hearing from a lot of Muslims and that I feel myself is that he's not actually doing anything substantive to keep America safe. He's actually making us less safe. Uh, and he's dressing up these discriminatory policies as national security uh, to create the impression that he's acting decisively. Uh, and we all know that, that when there are attacks, real or many times in his case imagined, uh, he uses those attacks to further justify discriminatory policy. Hmm. Uh, Farhana, I mean, I, I know that you do believe that this is a Muslim ban, um, as does uh, Haroon. But what about the White House argument that the most, the countries with the largest Muslim majorities, Afghanistan, Indonesia, Pakistan, Turkey, India, I could go on and on, are not included in this. People can still, Muslims can still come in from these countries. How can it be a Muslim ban? Well, let me first say, Allison, I totally agree with Haroon. I think the president is desperately trying to put lipstick on a pig. And to answer your question very directly, even in the first executive order, the seven countries that are, were identified were simply the first seven. The language of the executive order specifically anticipated an expansion of that list. And now, obviously, we haven't seen the second one yet, but I think we'll be looking very closely at the language of that one well, to see just, whether just, it, just to too, be anticipates. Clear, because we've seen yeah. CNN does have some reporting on this. It, they are expecting okay. it to be the, the same seven. So this okay. new revised order, it, if it's the same seven countries, are you saying that it will expand to include every country that has a Muslim majority? So, again, I haven't seen the language of, the, of number two, but executive order number one clearly anticipated an expansion of the list. But more importantly, Allison, these seven countries actually represent a majority of Muslim refugees who've immigrated to the United States in the last year. And I think that actually speaks to the real motivation behind this Muslim ban, and that is to halt the immigration of Muslims. Um, why else target these particular countries when immigrants from these particular countries have not actually engaged in terrorist activities in the United yeah, States? Yeah, sure. No, I hear and, you. I mean, look, there's lots of issues with it. I, I, you guys can certainly have lots of issues with this. But I, on this particular point, I don't understand your point. Why not include then, if this is a Muslim ban and you don't want refugees or any immigrants who are Muslim coming in, from any sort of hotspot, then why don't they have Pakistan and Afghanistan and Indonesia on here? Well, or, or, or go ahead, for, you, you can finish your, your thought, Pahana. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, Alice, and I think that the, the real problem here is that it, it's, it's really harmful and dangerous for us as a country to just be blanketly labeling particular countries as a threat and halting immigration from those countries. I think where our government needs to be focused is identifying dangerous individuals who may be seeking to enter the country. And if I may add, I think the reason for that and the reason why, again, based on this early reporting, we're still very concerned about executive order number two is that it would halt new immigration and new visitors from our country uh, to our country. And, and let me just give you an example. Imagine living your life without an iPhone, without an iPad, or other product by Apple. I imagine if, and that's what would have happened if yeah. decades ago the United States had barred entry to the father of Steve Jobs, who first entered the United States on a student visa. Yes. So I think shutting our borders means shutting innovation, um, shutting access to health care, and shutting economic growth. Sure. And I think no American can reasonably think that's a good thing. Look, we are a nation of, of immigrants. All of our 
grandparents came from somewhere else. But Haroon, I mean, again, you know what the White House says. They say that they didn't come up with these seven countries. They say it was the Obama administration that identified these seven countries as these particular hot spots where there needs to be a pause so they can figure out what better vetting is, though they haven't identified that. And again, if Indonesia is not on here, how can it be a blanket Muslim ban? Look at his language. So, uh, I mean, this is a fascinating thing, right? We just reported earlier uh, in this show about a wave of anti-Semitic attacks, and yet the president refuses to condemn anti-Semitism. Uh, is he an anti-Semite? I don't think so, but he's empowered anti-Semites. Uh, he's got Steve Bannon uh, as the power behind the throne, right? The guy who seems to be running things within this chaotic White House that is unable to really get anything done in a professional or competent manner. Uh, he's putting people in place who have odious views. He's said himself that he wants a complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Uh, he's bringing in people who have white supremacist neo-Nazi views. He refuses to condemn them. So if you're a person who's concerned with secular democracy and you believe in America and what America represents, if a candidate running for office says, I'm going to ban an entire group of people based on their religion from entering the country, and then within the first week of basically being president, sets in motion uh, something that appears to be the first stage of that ban, yeah. then the question is, you know, is he going to add Indonesia? I mean, it, it seems like if he could, if there hadn't been resistance from the courts, then he would have, and he will, and he's going to keep trying because that's what he actually believes. He doesn't believe in the idea of America. He's not actually trying to keep us safe. He's just trying to turn America into a kind of supremacist country that most of us wouldn't want to live in. You're, you make a good point that it is his own words.